Scream 2 movie thoughts. I remember my initial reaction when I realized who the killer was, so to speak, in this film when I first watched it. And I found that some people on the IMDb message boards echoed it. Wait, who's that? Yes, I guess we had seen Mickey in a bunch of earlier scenes, but he just did not make that much of an impact. I mean, if you look at who the killer was in the first one, yeah, there's no mistaking. But with this, just kind of... And it's a bit unfortunate because he's really, really good. I mean, once you see, once once the mask comes off and you see the insanity just coming straight out of Timothy Oliphant's eyes, he's got it down. He really makes you think that, that this guy's gonna freaking slit your throat in a second, you know. He's really, and, and just in, in general, Timothy Oliphant, cool. It just... I'm pretty sure he's one of the definitions, if you look it up in the dictionary. Just automatically. And he is quite good in the other scenes he's in. It just... He doesn't make as big of an impact. I would also say the best friend doesn't make as much of an impact. I mean, when you watch the first movie, and... You know... I'm... Yeah, okay, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but... <laughs> yeah, it just isn't as strong when the best friend is in danger in this. The other killer... I'm quite impressed with how this middle-aged woman can also do the whole insanity in her eyes thing. And of course, it's over the top. It's supposed to be. You're not supposed to take these movies entirely seriously. You know, the, this particular watching I watched with my father, and I... A couple of times I had to remind him, you're not supposed to take this seriously. It's, it's part parody. It's, you know, it's relishing in the fact that it's absurd. You know, how does the killer go from being in the car, seemingly knocked out, to all the way over behind, you know, okay, in that situation, maybe there are two, but... There are situations that just, you know, how, how does Dewey survive all that stabbing, being left for dead for that long, you know? But it's just, it's, it's fun, and it is genuinely effective, and in spite of how extreme it gets at times, we're never thrown off. You know, the movie has you from start to finish, really. I'm a little disappointed that this had so few calls. I suppose the only real situation with that was really Cece, you know, Sarah Michelle Gellar, who does a good job, you know, you can tell that she, you know, from her movie choices, she gets this, you know, she, she has a sense of humor, and, you know, yeah. I suppose that was one of the deaths that were a bit more extreme than that of the first, you know, getting thrown off the... but. Yeah, you know, it just... That was the one call. Some great lines in it, I'll definitely admit. I love the whole mistaken identity thing, you know. Who's Ted? Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you were someone else. That's okay, I am. Yeah, that's just, that's... That really works. And some of the other, you know... And just, I like that they incorporate Mr. Lee Schreiber, I don't remember the character name at the moment, with this whole, I mean, he was seen like, what, once in the first, you know, on TV, that was kind of it, but in this, they, you know, they do some, they have some fun with the character, they get back to this kind of... You know, and they have him being be a threatening entity, and there are times when you seriously think he's going to be the killer. You know, because he wants attention. He he was locked up, and he was innocent. He wants attention. He he has earned attention. He has earned people knowing that he is not guilty. You know, and that kind of fire and 
you know, you, you do get to be a little creeped out by him. And then the whole thing with, you know, I bet that Diane Sawyer's, sorry, you know, looking pretty good right now, eh? Eh? You know, hint, hint. You know, can I make it any more obvious? Because, you know, Debbie Salt, Mrs. Loomis, doesn't know about that whole interview. You know, only, I guess, Sid and, you know, not Killer knew. So, yeah, you know, it's like, you got it. It just, her face, her reaction, she's like, <laughs> What? Brilliant! You know, her eyes... There's like... There's a half a second where you fear they will pop out of their sockets. It's just... And, you know, shoots... And then... The, the final... With, you know... Then Gale shows up, you know, and it's like... <laughs> okay, anybody else down there? You know... Good sense of humor to, to Schreiber's character. And then, you know... Okay, give, give, I, I need one of those guns, and they're both, you know, like, okay, is she gonna come back? They always do. And then behind them, Mickey shows up, Oliphant throwing his best freaking insane person impersonation, you know, and just, ah! And they blow him away like it's a freaking John Woo movie. Okay. Whew, you know, and then, you know, just one to the... the you know, the forehead of Debbie Soul, just, just in case, you know. I like what they did with the boyfriend, Derek, because at first, he's like, perfect, you know, he's just so nice, you know, and, and then they have this whole, could he be the one, you know, wait, he got attacked, and, like, his... None of his major arteries were hit. He is studying medical science, you know, it's... And then there's... There start to be these moments where he's a little creepy, you know, and there's this nice ambivalence to the line, Sid, I just want you to know, at the end of this, I'll still be here. You know, like, okay, is that like you saying that, you know, you're gonna love her forever, you're gonna take care of her, or is that you saying, I'm actually the killer and I will get you? You know, there's just this really good double kind of thing. And in general, you know, you really feel like just about anyone could be the killer. I don't remember if I ever theorized that the black cameraman was the killer, but it actually occurred to me this time, he could have been, you know. Don't know what his motive would have been other than, I don't know, to add to the gut body count of white people in horror movies, but, you know, you have this... He shows up right after they find Randy, and he's like, what? What happened? I've got, yeah, I don't know, donuts or something. And then he leaves right after, and then he shows up at the end again. You know, it's kind of, could he have been, you know, and I guess in some ways it's a little obvious near the end that it was Mickey because, you know, who else, who other than the film dork, you know, to have videotaped all this stuff. And you keep seeing him with a video camera. It's like they're waving his, his they practically point a big red arrow right at him, saying, this is the killer, come on, people, really. The opening scene, I like how it's not as effective as that of the first, but I do like the use of the first, you know, with this movie premiere, and there's this whole, you know, Wes Craven comments on our obsession with violence and violent movies. You know, and then again, later with, oh, that's my motive, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm just going to blame the movies and it's all for the trial, you know, and he's like, he's staging his own freaking movie, you know. He's like, oh, it's a prelude to the trial and, you know, he thinks that this is like a movie, you know, he's, he's lost his sense of reality. He is insane. But yeah, the whole thing with, you know, commenting on this, you know, with the masks and they get the little knives and, you know, there's a second or a few seconds at the end of the first scene where it's like they don't realize it yet. They don't, they, they think that this is just some obnoxious moviegoer who's like walking around in the middle of the movie, just sit down, you know, just, and they're like throwing popcorn at her, like, and then she's up in front of the, screen, you know, she does her big scream. She's pretty good at that. Just, you know, watch some other old Jada Pinkett movies. That, yeah, anyway. 
and it's, you know, this whole thing of, and, and just, you know, and, and the death of her boyfriend with, you know, hearing this chatter, you, you cannot tell what the heck is being said from the other side of that door, you know, and then suddenly the knife comes in. I also noticed that there are far more masks in this movie than, you know, the first and the second, third. Yeah, so, I don't know. And, you know, you have the Greek choir. Again, great scene, great tension there, because it's like, where is he? Which one is he? And, you know, you just, if, if you're very, uh, paying a lot of attention, you can just briefly spot him running off before the others start taking off their masks. You, you know, it's like one shot that has him run across that image, and then we don't see him again in that scene. You know, and it is that kind of scene, because what do you do, you know? How, how does she... She's already... She's supposed to be running back and forth, you know? She's, it's, it's acting. It's a rehearsal, you know? And then you have... You know, suddenly he shows up holding the knife and, you know, going back and forth between the different masks, and then all the unmasking, you know, very careful in showing all the unmasking. I'm not going to pretend I'm smart enough to actually understand that, but there's something to it, I'm pretty sure. Then the, you know, the location of the climax is also pretty original, and, you know, it's nice that, it's not the first time we see that, you know, the stage there, and it's not the first time we realize that there's, you know, stuff that can be lowered there, and that whole thing. You know, and there are like several, there's at least two different times when, you know, first she's just up there and then stuff starts coming down, blocking her from going anywhere. Then Derek comes down, she's like, oh, I gotta untie you, and then the killer's there, Mickey. And then the second time with Miss Salt, where, you know, Sid is destroying all those things, also real good with close-ups of eyes in this movie. Anyway, you know, destroying, the, you know, chopping with the axe, and then, you know, you have these things falling down, and Debbie literally gets buried under, obviously it's not real rock, it's, you know, theater, it's like foam, rubber, something, but still, she is really quick and really silent about getting out of there. Again, the absurdity. But, I don't know, it, it just isn't as strong of a climax as that of the first. It... I don't know, I, I think there's maybe a little more focus on chasing and attacking than on explaining and, you know, going back and forth between what is the plan and who's in charge of the situation. I don't know. It just isn't quite as effective, but it is a pretty good follow-up. And it's also, you know, how do you do a good follow-up to something that's really good? You know, unless it's something where you can just have a kind of the continued adventures of, when you actually have to further something like that, it's... I do like what they did with the characters of Gale and... Dewey, you know, he's read the book, and I, I love the quote where he's explaining, maybe I'm just, I, I can't, you know, quote it directly, but you know what I'm talking about, the, you know, maybe what I do is just lower people's expectations so I can effectively maneuver in any given situation, you know, that whole thing, and, and just, and her smile, and him trying to look so, it was perfect casting, because that is David Arquette. You can't take him completely seriously, no matter what. He's just, he's kind of goofy, he is. And they play that up, and the whole, the, the theme, which keeps returning and gets a couple of different versions, you know, the theme tune to him, dum 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 dum, just really good. and. The fact that they're sort of falling for each other all over again, you know, she's showing, no, I actually do care, you know, deep down, you know, she might be really, she might hide it well, but deep down she does care about some things, you know, 
And I just, I like how this kind of furthers the relationship that way. I think that's one of the really good, you know, running things of these films. <sighs> the death of Randy just, just tear our hearts out and tear them to pieces, why don't you? Just, he was so much fun. Just, why kill him? That's just, that's just inhumane, man. Such a fun character, and just, you know, early on in this one, he's doing the, the freaking Brit impersonation. Von Stoff's happening, a multiplex soul, it's, it's, and they kill him. Just, I, I'm not entirely sure his performance is entirely as good as in the first, nor quite as fun, but it's still quite good. And I think that's it for this video.